Hello. Welcome to this session sponsored by Pager Duty. My name is Pashali. I'm a cloud engineer on the AWS Landing Zone team at Thomson Reuters. Hello, and I'm Sunal. I'm a software engineer on the cloud landing zone team at Thomson Reuters. In this session, we will be discussing how we use modern tools to manage our technology operations during cloud migration. Thomson Reuters is one of the world's most trusted providers of answers. We are on a mission to help professionals advance their businesses and gain competitive advantage with the trusted answers only we can provide. We support several business segments, including legal professionals, corporates, our news division, Reuters News, and tax and accounting. Over the next few minutes, we are going to give you an overview of how Thomson Reuters cloud journey has looked like. And then we will be discussing some of our challenges that we faced during this journey and how we overcame those challenges. We will also be discussing how we can use the AWS fully managed ML operation service for predictive monitoring. Sonal will now be uh, starting with our cloud journey. Would you like to start off with the cloud journey, Sonal? Thanks, Vishali. We started a cloud journey in 2015. We had a cloud first strategy which would implement new product development into the cloud. When we first started, we had around 20 applications running on a few hundred EC2 instances using a few dozen AWS services. In 2018, Thomson Reuters sold its financial services business, which made us rethink our net new cloud native strategy as we had to exit out of our data centers. This meant that we had to update our strategy to include the migration of non-cloud native applications to the cloud. Our progress with that strategy has been quite successful. As of Q3 2020, we hit a milestone of over 50% of our workloads running in the cloud. We have continued to grow our workloads in the cloud at a very rapid rate. An example of that would be the number of AWS accounts managed by our team. With increased automation, we have tripled our AWS accounts year over year with no signs of this slowing down. Moreover, as we have grown our cloud presence, we have started utilizing more and more of the services offered by AWS. Thanks, Sonal. This has been a mammoth task involving every part of Thomson Reuters and caught around three key principles. Dealing with high volumes, executing in short time frames, and ensuring uninterrupted business. But fully migrating to the cloud doesn't only mean re-architecting applications. It also signals a cultural shift one that requires engineers to take responsibility for the code and be able to execute an effective, fast incident response across multiple teams. Over the next few case studies, we will learn how Thomson Reuters uses PagerDuty to accelerate incident response mobilization, improve communication, and fundamentally drive culture change to reflect high velocity innovation. Ensuring uninterrupted business means we need to make sure we are proactive in our monitoring strategy. We need to gather metrics liberally and set up alarms. But how many alerts are too many? When we started consuming metrics on Datadog, we started setting up monitors. The number of monitors we set up quickly started to build up. And the number of alerts as well. In a few days, we realized too many alerts and the responders would be overwhelmed. It may cause alert desensitization in the long run. Urgent issues may get overlooked. And we call it zombification. We don't want us turned into zombies when a high urgency incident comes in. We need to triage and prioritize. So how do we ensure uninterrupted business while also preventing alert fatigue? The first step is to identify which alerts are actually actionable. This can be done from our monitoring tool. We want to consume as many metrics as we can. At the same time, 
only create monitors that actually warrant action. For example, high CPU utilization is not actionable itself, but impacted products or services due to higher CPU utilization is actionable. The second step, after we identify related actionable alerts, we need to group these alerts into a single instant. For this, we make use of pager duty. How? We can use several strategies. Use instant key for related events. If there are 50 related alerts, instead of having 50 instants, pager duty would automatically consolidate them into one actionable incident. PageDuty also offers intelligent alert grouping that combines multiple alerts coming in a short interval of time. Determine which instances are high urgency and which are not. Some of our app teams create separate services for potential P1 alerts. This helps with mobilizing the right ops teams and reduce the mean time to respond. Make use of PGD schedules, escalation levels, and notification rules. Schedule using layers. It helps with global teams across several time zones. Escalation levels help with making sure an incident is not missed. Make use of secondary on-call layers so you always have backup. Notification rules help team members set up the preferred notification method. Set as many as you like, especially for high urgency instance. The first three steps have helped app teams reduce the mean time to resolve the instance. One of the teams at Thomson Reuters had 90 minutes as a mean time to restore because it took 45 minutes to mobilize the right teams and 45 minutes to actually work to restore the service. After using the strategies, they cut the mean time to recovery by half. They reduced the 45 minutes team mobilization time to five minutes because they set up an automated response plane. On a major incident, PG duty would automatically notify the right teams and stakeholders. While the first three steps help ensuring uninterrupted business, the fourth step, in our view, is the most important step in combating alert fatigue. Make sure to have weekly alert review meetings with the entire team. Why? This step helps with identifying opportunities to optimize our alerting process. What did we do right? What could we have done better? Did we get any false positive alerts? How can we avoid those in future? This step helps us practice better monitoring hygiene as a team. We need to understand that this is an evolving process. It keeps getting better each time we review and action it as a team. If an alert took an hour to resolve the first time, it has a potential to be prevented or resolved within 15 minutes the next time it happens. Sonan will now be demonstrating some of the strategies we use for on-call schedules. Thanks, Vishali. Let's talk a bit about how we use page to escalation policies and on-call scheduling to bring down our time to acknowledge an incident to around five minutes. Escalation policies help ensure that the right people are notified at the right time when applications that they manage are impacted. As you can see from the above policy, the primary on-call schedule will get notified first. If the primary on-call does not acknowledge the incident, it will notify the lead on-call, and so on. This helps ensure that incidents are not only acknowledged promptly, but in an automated fashion. Another feature that we used was on-call scheduling. This is extremely useful to make sure that you have follow the sun coverage while ensuring the team on-call is not overworked or burnt out. 
In this example, we use two layers. The first layer is in the Eastern time zone, while the second layer is in the Indian time zone. Furthermore, we had on-call rotation pairing between alternate members of our team to ensure that the skills and knowledge was always shared. Now back to Bishawi. Thanks, Sunat. The second case study we would like to share is data linkage. We have ServiceNow as our system of record. And we have several monitoring tools, including Datadog, that sends alerts to PagerDuty. PagerDuty then creates an incident and creates a ServiceNow ticket. Here is an example of data coming from Datadog. We have several fields that need to be captured the name of the metric, the query, and the message fields are some of the important ones. And here is the data captured by PagerDuty. We can see all these fields coming in from Datadog, which are important for the ops team in order to take action. Since ServiceNow is our system of record, we need to make sure all these data need to be mapped to the ServiceNow ticket. In addition to this, our ServiceNow instance is multi-tenant. We have hundreds of applications and their respective support groups. How do we make sure the incident goes to the right group? How do we make sure the priority is mapped correctly? How do we map the correct page ready service to the correct business service in ServiceNow? How do we map the metrics coming in from our data dog monitoring tool to ServiceNow? It's cumbersome and error prone to manually map these fields from our monitoring tools to ServiceNow. And not only map these fields, we also need to make sure whenever an incident is updated, the update is recorded bidirectionally. For instance, Work notes updated in ServiceNow need to be updated in PageDuty too, and vice versa. If we updated the instant status as resolved in ServiceNow, the instant needs to be marked as resolved in PageDuty as well. So how do we achieve data linkage? We already discussed the first two steps. Datadog monitor is triggered when a threshold is crossed. PagerDuty extracts all the details from the alert. The third step is where we can use PagerDuty inbound field rules to customize which details are automatically consumed by the ServiceNow ticket. PagerDuty app in ServiceNow helps developers with the flexibility to write scripts to map the fields coming in from PagerDuty to ServiceNow. This helps with customization in accordance to the organization's data policies. And we can set up as many rules as we need to. The result is, when PagerDuty creates an incident ticket in ServiceNow, these inbound field rules automatically maps these fields to the respective ServiceNow field. And PagerDuty offers bi-directional sync of incident activity. Sonal is now going to give you a demonstration of how these fields are mapped and synced. Thanks, Vishali. When we first started considering PagerDuty, one of the most important features that we were looking for was its ServiceNow integration. As Vishali mentioned earlier, our instance ServiceNow is multi-tenant across all the Thompson writers and is the source of truth for requests, incidents, and applications. This meant that we needed a way to integrate between our alerts, in this case Datadog, and ServiceNow. Now let's see how all of this works in action. Datadog is one of our monitoring, monitoring tools and has just triggered an alert. We use the Datadog PageDuty integration, which will now create an incident inside of PageDuty. Once PageDuty creates an incident, it will use the escalation policy attached to the service to alert the engineer on call. Furthermore, it will also create an incident inside of ServiceNow. As you can see, it has the same incident in ServiceNow. 
It is quite essential for us to have bi-directional sync between ServiceNow and PageDuty to ensure that information is always up to date. This is very important during incidents where having the latest information is critical. So how does this bi-directional sync work? Let's look at the example again. Priority here is calculated based on impact and urgency. This is one of the many fields which are available in ServiceNow but cannot be mapped one for one with PageDuty. Of course, you could manually go in and map each incident field. However, this is time consuming and error prone. So we use a feature inside the PageDuty extension for ServiceNow, which is called inbound field rules. They're essentially JavaScript scripts that can run on a couple of parameters. In this case, the event triggering the incident and the payload body. We use quite a few of these inbound field rules to make the integration seamless and almost magical. Here's an example of an inbound field rule that updates a description field in ServiceNow with the value of the description field provided by PageDuty. This results in the body of the incident being updated with the details of the Datadog event that was triggered earlier. This is just one example of the customization control that the PageDuty extension for ServiceNow provided us to ensure that the integration was seamless and customized for our unique use case. Now back to Pishawi. We discussed some of the strategies we actively used at Thomson Reuters. Amazon Web Services has introduced a new service that uses machine learning to make cloud ops better. This service improves application availability and helps resolve operational issues faster with less manual effort. It leverages machine learning for analyzing AWS resource telemetry to identify behaviors that deviate from normal operating patterns. This service continuously ingests and analyzes AWS CloudWatch metrics and logs to look for anomalies. When an anomalous behavior is identified as an operational issue or risk, the service alerts app teams with insights. This makes it easy for app teams to improve application availability as it aggregates these anomalies together to create operational insights. And enabling this integration with our alerting tools such as PageDuty can help ensure fast instant response and reduce application downtime. Let's look at an example of the dashboard and the insights provided. Operational insights include information on what components are impacted and the related anomalies. This helps teams quickly understand the extent and likely causes of the issue. And teams can use the recommendations on how to remediate using contextual data such as log snippets and relevant cloud trail events. We're looking forward to adding this service to make our cloud journey even better and continue doing what we do the best. Provide trusted answers. Thanks for watching.